Hey everyone, my name is Matt with the Small Town Craftsman. Today I'm going to show you how I made this mid-century modern liquor cabinet with some really cool features, including a hidden lock. Stay tuned. I started off this build by breaking down my sheet goods. For this, I'm going to be using 3 quarter inch walnut veneer plywood, and this is going to take care of the top, the sides, and the bottom. So I cut it to length and then take everything over to my cross cut sled and cut it to width. After I cut it to width, sit everything at a 45 degree and we're going to miter these corners so everything looks nice and crisp. So I've got my plywood all cut to size and I, everything's mitered ready to go. And the way I did this is I set it so that everything flows in one continuous ring. So my top is actually going to be here so that the two sides that you see flow around nicely. And this bottom piece will flow on one side, but when it connects to this side, you won't see that transition because it's going to be underneath. So I'm going to get this taped up, see how it looks, and then fall as well and glue it. So everything's glued up nice and square. And one thing I want to show you, so I only have two of these corner clamps that keep it true to 90. So a quick little thing you can do, just made this little uh, shop 90 degree jig. So you give you clamping options on the side, you can go through the holes there and leave some room out in the corners just so if there is any glue squeeze out, you're not gonna get that on your board and glue it to your project piece. And there you see, you got a nice waterfall edge on the side of that cabinet going all the way around. And next, started working on the doors. I've already surfaced these boards on three sides. So here I'm just cleaning up that final rough edge so I can glue the boards together to make my doors. So what I've done is I've kind of laid out uh, what specific sections of each board that I want. And the seams, even just pressing with my hand, are pretty good, but they're not quite as tight as I'd like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip each board that's touching. So the first and second board, I'm gonna put those face to face and run those through the joiner. So any discrepancy off of uh, perfect 90 degrees, it's gonna make up for that so that when I do put the boards, that seam's just gonna disappear. So I'll do that to each board surface that touches and hopefully my seams come together a little bit smoother. After all of that has glued up, I'm gonna uh, rip that in half. So uh, my doors are oversized, don't wanna come quite to size yet. Um, by doing that, it's also gonna fit through my planer one more time just to make sure everything's perfectly smooth. And from there, I can uh, cut the doors to size. So now, as you can see, this is my first and second board. When I push this seam together, that line just disappears. And once I get some clamps on it, it'll look even better than that. So while the doors are glowing up, I'm going to start working on the legs for the cabinet. So what I've decided on is just a slight taper here, sticking with the mid-century modern vibe. And this is just out of some scrap 2 by material. So I've kind of, to make sure that I like the size, this is my scrap cabinet here. So just to give you an idea of what that's going to look like. And I've got my material laid out ready to go, so I'm just going to laminate some of the boards that I already have milled up, uh, plant them down to one and a half inches thick, and then after that I'll take them to my cross-cut sled and show you how I cut the tape on. 
While the laminated pieces for the legs were gluing up, I started working on the edge banding for the cabinet. So I decided to do a 45 degree bevel all the way around the cabinet and I'm gonna miter these corners as well. And it was much easier to cut these on the table saw versus trying to route uh, these tiny little pieces. So using a feather board there just to help everything stay against the fence so cuts nice and smooth. I did end up getting a little burning here that I had to sand out, but after that, I just made a lot of cuts on my little miter sled one by one, sneaking up on these cuts so everything was fitting nice and tight. All right, so after I got everything cut, I went one by one and glued each side to the frame and don't have that many clamps. Most of them are in the uh, other stuff getting clamped up. So painter's tape will do the trick and I'm gonna let that sit for the, uh, tonight and I'll come back tomorrow and I'll clean up these inside edges with a flush trim bit and probably have to chisel the corners just a little bit. And I did it so that it's flush on the outside. So just to have to trim up this here on the inside, all the way around. After the cabinet set overnight, I came back with the flush trim bit and got everything nice and smooth on the inside. Hindsight probably should have done the opposite and made it a little proud on the outside. Probably would have been a little easier, but nonetheless got it done anyway so after that the doors uh, have been glued up and are ready to cut so i cut those in half and i know this looks kind of weird right here but it's going to make sense in a minute but after that's cut sent everything through the planer just to make sure everything was uh, nice and flat i did chisel off the dry glue before i went through this and just wanted to make sure that i was at my final thickness of three quarters of an inch and they are good to go. Now that I have the doors to their final thickness, now I'm gonna cut them to rough height. So I know out of all of this, I need about 20 inches. So I'm gonna cut just a little uh, more than that. And I'm gonna be sure to avoid my big knot here. This is gonna be really what you see when you look at the cabinet. So I wanna make sure that I have a really good face here. So I'll take this on the cross cut sled, get this, close at least lengthwise and then I can trim it down the other way to get it close to my final width. So the doors are ready to be cut to final size but I can't quite cut them like a normal door where it's just straight on both sides. So these doors are actually going to have a lock, a hidden lock behind one of them. And the kicker is the lock only works on one door, but I have two doors. So what, I'm, what I've decided to do is I'm gonna cut each door with a rabbit and they're gonna overlap. And this is gonna allow me to lock just the front door and both will remain um, unopenable until, unopenable, is that a word? I don't think that's a word. Um, but either way, you can't open one door without unlocking and letting both of these open up. So this is what this looks like here. So both have a rabbit. One, the lock will be on the back of this door. And once that is open, this allow this, this one to open. So. All right, so I'm ready to cut the rabbit in each of the doors. And I took uh, half the thickness with my calipers and I set that height. So um, I'm gonna be going halfway through each board. I'm actually gonna go a little bit less just in case. Um, but also I've labeled each door left and right and then also whether it's going to be the front of the, uh, the locking kind of mechanism or the back because things can get a little confusing. Um, and I did another test run just to make sure everything was dialed in. So uh, we'll see how it goes. After I got the rabbits cut in the doors, I cut them to their final length. I uh, just stuck them back together so I made sure everything was nice and perfectly, nice and perfectly, nice and perfect in line. And after that, I installed the hinges and usually don't install hinges like this, but um, cabinet was small enough, it was easy enough to kind of flip over and get everything into position. And here I'm using the Bloom soft close door hinges. I'm um, really happy with the way everything lined up there. 
And after the doors were done, I started working on the drawer front and it was already to rough size. So I just had to um, scribe it just a little bit to make sure everything was fit nice and perfect. So I set that up and once that was in place, I put all of my shims in just with some playing cards to make sure my spacing was even all the way across. Uh, once again, trimmed just a little bit. And then after that, I started working on my legs which I forgot to film cutting those out. And for the leg assembly, nothing fancy here. I just drilled straight through the leg into the apron and just used a trim head screw, widened that out just a little bit because I didn't have a dowel small enough. Uh, glued, tapped a dowel in, flush trimmed it, and now that'll give it a nice little accent piece uh, on the leg. Uh, after that, took it to the drill press, drilled the holes on the side, and after the holes were there on the side, didn't use a screw this time, uh, didn't want to hit the other screw going across, so just the dowel I think is going to be enough strength for the purposes of this cabinet. After that, I glued everything up, checked everything for square, clamped it, and set it to the side. If you like what you've seen so far, do me a favor, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I come out with a new video. This is my first YouTube video, so cut me a little slack here. Uh, hopefully everything just continues to get even better after this one. While the leg assembly was glowing up, I started working on the drawer for this. So I'm using half inch plywood for uh, the drawer sides and front and back and I'm gonna use quarter inch plywood for the drawer bottom. So cutting these to length and width here on the table saw, and I'm gonna cut a groove in each side, and I'm gonna put the panel uh, in that groove. Um, don't need a whole lot of room for this drawer because it's only gonna hold uh, bottle openers, wine openers, things like that. Um, so even though it is a small drawer, it's still plenty of room for what I need here. Also considering what this drawer is going to be used for and how it's going to be used, um, I just did glue and 18 gauge brad nails and I think that that's going to be plenty strong for this. So the drawer actually won't be pulled much um, from the front because it's going to have a push to open feature and that's going to pop out so you won't actually pull it like you would a traditional drawer. So got it uh, squared up nailed in place and after that I was ready to install the drawer slides. All right so I uh, went to install some drawers and realized I ordered the wrong size drawer slides. So if you notice this against the back here. See how that sticks out? I forgot that I'm doing inset drawers so that's not going to work. So, ordered the right size drawer slides, and before I had just an undermount, soft close drawer slide. But then, as the design kind of went on, I decided that I didn't want to actually cut into the drawer face, and I wanted it to just look a little more, more sleek. So I ordered these push to open slides, so I shouldn't have to worry about any hardware. And if my lock works correctly on the doors, I might be able to get away with not having to use hardware on the doors too because it might just pop right open. So we'll see. I've got the drawer installed. Everything um, didn't go quite as smooth as I'd like. I cannot get the drawer slides apart for the life of me. But finally got it in. And now if you just push, it pops right out. So seems to be working well. This will be in there. So won't have to have any hardware. I can just push this and it'll pop right out. Boom. So now that the drawer's in, time to put the drawer face on. So using the same playing cards as before, making sure that my spacing is consistent between the doors and the sides and the drawer face and the sides as well as the top. So um, got that clamped in place and once that was clamped in place, I was able to permanently attach it to the drawer box. So pre-drilled my holes, and once I got the right size drill bit, first time it was a little bit too long, as you'll see here, uh, but got the right size drill bit and drilled that in and took the clamps off and it was good to go. After that, I sanded everything to 220 and then it was time for some finish. So here I'm using my super secret blend of polyurethane, 
mineral spirits and boiled linseed oil. So I wiped on three coats, sanding in between coats. And after a few days, I put everything back together and brought it inside.